So this video is going to be about the Autolite 4100 carburetor. And what I'm going to try to do is go through and explain what all the holes do. So if you're rebuilding one of these, you can know what holes to check and what they do and all that. So I've already removed some parts, so let's take the top off. Okay. So let's just start with where the fuel comes in. So here's the fuel filter. The fuel comes in here. And then here's the uh, the first float needle valve, so the float would be in here normally. And again, this would open and close to maintain the level of the fuel. And if you look at the varnish, you can see that the approximate fuel level should be right below this pressure equalizing duct here. But uh, there's also a passage here that goes to the back bowl, and there's another needle valve there. Okay? And then the next obvious thing is, is going to be the two jets there. Okay, and then this thing here is called the power valve, and this is going to get sucked open when there's a, a high vacuum condition when the engine's under load. So the fuel is going to get sucked through these two jets into a passage underneath here. And the same thing here is in the back, so there's another set of jets there. Okay, no power valve in the back though. Alright, the next thing to talk about would be the accelerator pump. Now there are a few holes here. The inlet is actually the lowest hole. It's below that red thing. It's hard to see, but there's a hole underneath there. And that's where it goes into this pump. And of course, when you step on the gas, the initial stroke there moves the accelerator pump and it pushes the fuel out through this passage and it goes into the center screw of the booster venturi. So that passage there ends up coming out here. And normally there should be a little check ball in there. Okay. And it actually comes up through there and the screw that held in that booster venturi is hollow. There's a hole in it and there's holes on the sides. So the gas will come through that screw and then they will come through the two accelerator pump nozzles in the booster venturi. So you can see the two nozzles there. So there's the one hole there's the other hole, and those come out. You can see the two nozzles there, and it comes out those holes there. So what it will actually do is it will squirt, and it will hit against the circular booster venturi part. So as soon as you move the throttle here, this part, you should see gas squirting out of those, uh, those nozzles there. So if you don't see that happening, or there's kind of a delay, between when you move this and you see gas or if you have to pump it up a few times you might have some kind of leak or check valve problem there okay and you can run a pin through both of those a fine pin to make sure they're clear okay uh, let's see what else uh, well we can talk about the main holes here for the fuel so the fuel gets sucked in through these jets underneath and it comes through here to these fuel wells here, okay? And these parts here bend into those. And you see the, all the little holes there. Make sure all those holes on both sides are clear. And then also check these holes. So there's an inner tube and an outer tube. The holes are only in the outer tube. The inner tube is actually for the idle. Uh, fuel. So what happens with the idle, well let's do the main fuel first. So the main fuel is going to get sucked up in here between the inner and outer tube and then it eventually is going to come out the venturi and all those little holes inside there. Okay. Um, the So the idle is those, those inner little tubes. So for the idle the fuel comes up to the top and then it comes back down here out there and then it goes into this smaller hole here which goes straight down to the transition holes if I open the throttle I don't know if you can see those but there's let's see you can see five holes on this one there's only four on this side but I'll flip it over and show you those uh, later but there's kind of on mine there's three right in a row and then there's one kind of lower down there, and then there's one off to the bottom here. 
and I'll talk more about that one's special. That's not a fuel one, that's a vacuum hole. And But on this side, you can see the same thing. So if you squirt carb cleaner into that this smaller hole here, you should see it come out of all of those holes down there. Okay, And the other, and actually before it gets to those holes, it goes through the idle needle valve. So there's one on this side and one on this side. So this is on the bottom of the front of the carb. And I have those needle valves removed. So this would be how you adjust the idle mixture. So that tube comes straight down from the top of the carb and it has to run through that needle valve to get to that bottommost hole. While we're at it, we'll flip this over. Okay, I'll get the other enteries fill out there. Okay, so you can see those holes there. Now, my carburetor has three little holes. Yours might only have two, okay? But if you notice, and we gotta get the fast idle cam out of the way here. Hang on a sec, okay. There we go. So now the throttle can close all the way to the idle position. And you notice at the warm idle position, the only hole that's exposed is that big one, okay? And that's the hole that the idle uh, screw that's up front here controls the, the fuel coming out of there, okay? And then when you open this throttle, uh, then the fuel can come out of those holes as well. But actually when this throttle is closed, it needs to suck air in from those three little holes. So it sucks some air from those three little holes and then it comes out there. But also on the Venturi, there is a idle bleed screw right here. Okay, so again, the, the inner tube here is the idle fuel that comes up here. There's this bleed hole that lets air in. And then there's actually another hole right there. Okay. So make sure those are clear. If you're having trouble with your idle, it needs to be able to suck air in there and there, okay? And you can see there's kind of another jet there, but that's coming through from the angle down part. All right, so that's the idle part. There's another set of holes up here, but those are for the, uh, the high speed air bleed hole. So that's for the actual uh, main fuel for the Venturi's. So, and these holes are communicated through to the inner pipe there. And then there's another set on the back here too that also goes to in between those inner two. So, lots of holes to worry about. So you got these two on the back, you got those two on the top, and then those these two on the front. And then on the, the front or primary venturi, there's these two on the side. Those aren't there on the secondary. So if I hit the secondary venturi, okay. Two back ones, two top ones, two front ones, but then there aren't ones on the side. Okay, that one is just wide open because uh, this it's just used for the transition holes. So it's not really idle. It's just needed for transition, so that doesn't have to be meters as much. But make sure you check all those holes to make sure they're clear. Okay? And then same thing with all these holes. Make sure that you run a needle through all of those holes. And also on the secondaries, you can see uh, there's two and then the main one down there. Two and then the main one down there. Okay? And same idea there, when this is closed, I think this provides a little bit of uh, fuel to the back. Um, but then when this opens, then it sucks more out of there. Okay, so while we're down here, there's a couple more. Next would be this, this one off to the side. Okay, this one is the ported vacuum hole, and that goes out here to this connection here, which is the uh, ported vacuum that goes to the distributor vacuum advance. And how that works is when you're at hot idle, so I'm gonna have to move this out of the way, okay? So this is hot idle. You can see that that hole is mostly closed 
when you're at idle. Oh, there we go. Okay, now it's all the way closed. So that hole is covered, so you shouldn't be getting vacuum out of here if you're on hot idle, or very little. Okay, but then as soon as you open that throttle a little bit, then that hole is exposed, and then you're going to get vacuum out of here, and then that should advance your timing. Okay, so that's how that should work, that, that hose on the distributor. If you're at warm idle, yeah, you might not have any vacuum because it's what's called a ported vacuum. It's only there when the throttle is open a little bit. Okay, um, other holes here. This here is the bottom of the power valve. And again, that will open when uh, there's a high demand, uh, high vacuum situation. So this chamber here is connected through these little passages to the intake manifold. Okay, and that, that hole is the vacuum pickup for the power valve. So when this experiences vacuum, uh, from these, it will also open. There's another hole right down in there, and I'll flip it around and show you that one. Okay, that hole is this one right here. And I think this is some kind of balancing hole for the power valve. I'm not sure exactly what it does, but make sure that's clear. Then you also have these two balancing tubes. Okay, so these would normally sit right below the booster venturi if I put this in. And you can see that they are sitting pretty much right at the corner of that venturi. And if I flip this back over, they end up here. There's two little holes. Okay. There's another hole here which goes to the center. And I'll talk more about that later. And then there's a hole on the side, and that is the vacuum pickup for the choke. Okay, so that actually passes through sideways and comes through this tube uh, to the automatic vacuum choke. So that's where it sucks air. And if you know how this works, uh, it will suck air through what are called choke tubes, which pass by the exhaust manifold. And the idea is that it warms up the air the exhaust manifold warms up the air, and then it gets sucked through this, which is a thermostatic spring. So as this warms up, it's going to open the choke slowly and adjust the fast idle cam and all that stuff. Okay, let's see. Any other holes I can think of on the bottom? I think that's it, so we'll flip back up to the top. Okay. So, I, I think I talked about these holes in, uh, they're basically the same as the front. The exception is this screw, uh, whereas up here, it, this is where the accelerator pump fuel comes through. In the back, it's, or wait, no, oh, I'm flipped over. This is, this is the front, sorry. Um, this is the, the back. This isn't connected to anything in the back side, whereas this side is connected to the accelerator pump, but back here it is not. Okay, but then these work the same way. So the fuel goes through these jets, and then it comes in here to this, these main fuel wells, and then it goes up through that, that main um, bar, and then it goes back down through to this tube, and then out those little holes on the side there. Okay, so make sure all those holes are clear. Now let's talk about the secondaries. How do the secondaries work? Okay, well, you have this linkage on the side here, which is connected to the secondaries. Okay, and this thing on the back is the secondary actuator. So this thing on the back is actually what pushes this lever open and opens the secondary throttle. And this is a vacuum actuator. How this works is it's going to sense the amount of vacuum going, or amount of air coming through the top of the carb and via vacuum become open. And the port that does this is this one right here. So it vacuum is transmitted here um, from over here to this port. So it sucks on this port. And when you have suction on that port, these open up. Okay. So that port is actually in the lid or the cover. And let me flip it. So it's in this orientation. So this hole lines up with that. And there's a passage that goes across here. 
and then it goes into this C-shaped place, okay? So this goes through there. Uh, the gasket covers this, but then it goes into that hole, which is connected to this tube here. And how this works is, you can see that tube right there. I should maybe put the Venturi in, so you can see. Okay, that tube is sitting basically all right around the edge of that booster Venturi. So when you have this thing opened up, and this is sucking air uh, really, really fast, there's going to be a low pressure zone created there okay, by the Bernoulli effect or Venturi effect, that you have low pressure being created there, and that low pressure is transmitted back here to the secondaries. Okay, So that's actually how the secondaries uh, work. So now I'd avoid, don't spray carb cleaner in here because you might mess with this diaphragm. But if you just put your finger on here and um, move this, you can should be able to kind of stop its movement by putting your thumb over there. And you can hear the air getting blown out of that hole when you move that. Okay, so that's how that should work. All right, then the last thing is this thermostatic spring. Okay, so I kind of need a screwdriver. But what happens is when this gets nice and warm, this spring actually pulls this thing out. It's not focused. Sorry about that. This pulls that out. And this is basically a conical uh, plug that opens up and it lets air through there, through a passage here. It's that large circular hole, which connects to that circular hole which goes underneath the carburetor, large circular hole, and then you're underneath here to that center part which is connected to the intake manifold with those notches, okay? Uh, the vacuum is also experienced by the balance tubes. So I think the idea there is when the engine is nice and warm, you want it to be a little bit more lean, so this opens up and lets a little bit more bypass air through, and again, this air isn't going to get enriched with fuel at all. It's just going to go straight to the manifold. So I think this is a way of kind of leaning out the mixture a little bit when it gets uh, hot out. Okay, and maybe I'll do another video on how the choke works. But essentially what you want to make sure is when you try to start the car cold, this choke is completely closed. If it's not completely closed, the car probably won't start. So if it's sitting... Even like that, where there's a little bit of a gap, uh, that's not going to work. You want this to be nice and tightly closed. And then as soon as you start the engine, the vacuum on motor in here, it will suck the piston down, and this should open up a little bit. Okay. And then obviously as the engine warms, this is going to open up. And also the fast idle cam is going to, to move out of the way so that that screw for the, fa for the, the throttle can... Uh, go all the way in without catching that fast idle cam, and then you have the throttles close all the way. Okay, so I think that's all the holes, unless I missed any, but the rest either don't do anything or they're just for mounting. So the center hole doesn't do anything. These are all closed mounting holes for the screws and so on, same thing here. These are just screw holes for mounting, okay? So that's all the holes you need to worry about if you're rebuilding this. So especially on these guys, those top, front, and back holes, don't forget about those, okay? Um, so there you have it, Autolite 4100, all the holes.